What is the data on the GAPS and the SCD diet in helping to reverse inflammatory bowel disease? Question I haven't had in a long time. I'm glad to have it. And there was a very famous pediatrician. I believe, I know his name was Dr. Haas. I think it was Sidney Valentine Haas, H-A-A-S. And in about 1950, as a pediatrician, treating severely uh, troubled children with digestion, he thought, you know, it, the problem is actually carbohydrates and sugar. So why don't we restrict severely carbohydrates? Why don't we increase meat? Why don't we increase broth, but not bone broth? He pointed out that bone broth is too rich in glutamate. Bone broth is too rich in toxins that usually are in the bones and get liberated when the bone broth is made. He was a big fan of meat broths, but he said no bone broth until you're well on your way to being well. Beyond that, in my opinion, it was the best that could be done in 1950. Well, we're more than a half a century forward, and Dr. Haas didn't have the benefit of the LRA by ELISA ACT test to individualize and personalize and determine which foods, chemicals, medicines, and toxins the individual is reacting against and which they're tolerant to. I'm pretty sure that if Dr. Haas were here with me today, he would be doing the LRA by ELISA ACT test and following the Joy of Living the Alkaline Way program. He was a brilliant pediatrician from 1950. It is likely that in the last half century plus, we've learned something that's relevant. And you know, my point of view is that if the diet is severely imbalanced, for example, if you look at the SCD or the GAPS program, initially you take in a very large amount of meat and protein because you're restricted from carbohydrates. Why? Because carbohydrates turn into sugar and sugar is a problem for many people with digestive issues. Well, yes, carbohydrates, especially complex carbohydrates, turn into sugar. You are sweet enough as you are. You don't need to add sugar to your diet. Yes, he was a brilliant clinician who came up with a restricted diet that if you take it for too long, and he agreed with this, if you followed his diet for a long period of time, you would be severely deficient. On the other hand, it saved the lives of many children and several health writers of the 1950s had children who were helped by Dr. Haas and they wrote many, many, many articles about why carbohydrates bad protein, fat, good. Well, that's easy to say. Carbohydrate, bad, fat, protein, good. And what I say is imbalance is a problem. However you create the imbalance, it's a problem. If you follow either the GAPS program or the SCD program carefully, you will have far too much protein and therefore acidosis. You will have far too much fat and you will induce insulin resistance over time. And Dr. Haas felt that insulin resistance and diabetes was manageable, whereas severe pain in the tummy of a child was a more severe problem. So with respect, they are historical, and I believe have been, um, they were the prior generation. The next generation is LRA by ELISA Act tests and following the joy of living the Alkaline Way plan. And I believe that Dr. Haas, who died in about 1960 or 63 or something, he's died about the time I started college. So he was really someone I didn't know until I read the literature later. But thanks for the question. I think the gaps in SCD diet were well intended. I think they have been replaced by more advanced, more comprehensive uh, and, and safer approaches, especially the LRA by ELISA Act test uh, and plan.